Okay, so if you're going to use the um, note taking guide that I posted, you want to make sure you have that printed. Um, for some of you, you might see I write a little squish. If you want more space, um, feel free to make a copy of the doc and put a little more space in there before you print it. Um, or just do this on whatever paper you want. Um, so we've learned how to complete and balance one type of reaction before, and that was a double displacement reaction. So if you remember in a double displacement reaction, we had some compound, I'm just going to make one up right now, AB, um, reacting with another compound, CD, so this is just a generic reaction. Um, and what we did was we took the positive ions, the A and the C in this case, the first parts of each compound, we swapped places and recrisscrossed on the other side. Um, so we ended up with something like AD and CB. If you need a refresher of that, if this doesn't ring a bell, go back and watch that video. I'll have it linked in the classwork doc. Um, this is called double displacement because we have two things, A and C, double, that are displacing each other, that are pushing each other out of the way. Um, and so what separates how you're going to know something is a double displacement reaction, it's important to realize that what we start with, one, two, we start with two compounds. Um, compounds, not singular elements, not something like bromine or chlorine or iron, but actual compounds, something where we've crisscrossed. Um, single displacement is a similar type of reaction. So it's still displacement. We still have something being pushed out of the way. But when it's single displacement, um, we start off a little bit differently. Rather than starting with two compounds, for single displacement, we start off with one compound and one element. Um, so elements, it could, like all the ones I just said as examples, it could be iron, it could be lithium, it could be oxygen, I might even call it oxygen gas, but that's still just oxygen, um, a singular element rather than something that has been ionically bound together. Um, you'll see here on your notes, sorry, right here, um, these are called diatomic elements. To remember them all, because you're responsible for knowing them, people pronounce this as Brinkelhoff. Um, so a lot of my students end up just calling them the Brinkelhoffs, but they are called diatomic elements. Di meaning two atomic atoms. These are elements, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine that in their pure form, whenever they're by themselves, not a part of a compound, they end up having a two subscript. It ends up that there are two of them bonded together. So those also counts as elements rather than compounds. Um, additionally, there are a few acids that are listed here that we ask you to learn and know. Um, those are things that are compounds, they just happen to also be acids. So hydrochloric acid is hydrogen bonded to chlorine. You could look at their charges and crisscross. Sulfuric acid is hydrogen bonded to sulfate. You can also look at their charges and crisscross. And same with nitric acid, which is hydrogen bonded to nitrate. So single displacement reactions. If we are starting with a compound, something like AB, and then we are reacting it with some element, something just like C. So there's no D in this case. Um, what's going to happen is that C, when it's by itself, an element by itself, doesn't have a charge. So C doesn't have a charge, but if it were a positive charge, um, it would go and displace the other positive charge. If it were a negative charge, it would go and displace the other negative charge. Um, so let's say it ends up looking like this for this example. Now, this example makes a lot more sense, I think, when you actually see real elements. But that's the general idea. We're still taking something, pushing it out of the way. Um, we just now end up with something else left alone here. So an example for you. If I say that fluorine reacts with hydrochloric acid. Right? I'm not going to say here's a single displacement reaction, ready, set, go, 
But from looking at this, you might not know in the words, but we're going to start just by translating those words into a chemical formula. So fluorine, that's just F, except I remember that fluorine is one of my diatomic elements. So since it's currently by itself, F2 reacts with hydrochloric acid is one of the acids that I know, HCl. And boom, there's my left-hand side. When I go to figure out the right-hand side, I need to look first at the singular element, in this case, fluorine. And I want to see, is it positively or negatively charged? Because it's always going to, on the other side of the arrow, bond with something of an opposite charge. So I look on the periodic table, fluorine's almost all the way to the right. At the top of the column, it says it's a negative one. Hydrogen's a positive one, and chlorine's a negative one. The one doesn't matter so much until we crisscross, but Fluorine's negative. Negative things will bond with positive things. So on the right-hand side, and I'm just going to erase and give myself a little bit more room above here. Hydrogen is a positive one, is going to react with fluorine, which is a negative one. Let me make this a little more clear. Sorry about that. So what's happening is the fluorine is coming and bumping that chlorine out of the way so that the hydrogen and fluorine can bond, positive one and negative one. H and F, I crisscross and get HF. Then um, I'm left with chlorine by itself. Now, since chlorine is a diatomic, also it gets a two, only because it's a diatomic and it's now by itself. Notice. I didn't bring fluorines two over. Um, just like with double displacement, I start from the charges and re-crisscross. I don't bring any of the um, subscripts over unless it's like part of a polyatomic ion. Um, and then I'd want to balance this. So two fluorines on the left, let me get two fluorines on the right. That gives me two hydrogens on the right. So I'll put two hydrogens on the left. That gives me two chlorines on the left. I have two chlorines on the right. Um, so I'm done. Um, okay, there are a few for you to try. Before you try them, though, I actually want to give you a couple more tips. So throw these in the margin somewhere. Um, if I throw a word on there like metal or gas, so like oxygen, gas, or lithium, metal, don't let those words throw you off. Oxygen, at normal conditions is a gas. So it's reasonable for me to call it oxygen gas. It doesn't change how you approach it. It's just oxygen. Double check if it's a diatomic or not though. Lithium metal, okay, lithium is a metal. That's just true. So it doesn't matter that I called it metal. If I say lithium metal, you're just thinking lithium. One other thing is when we are using water, um, and I don't remember if I covered this in double displacement or not, but when we're using water in single or double displacement reactions, um, it's helpful to think of water as HOH. I'm okay with that being in your final answer. Um, I'm also okay if at the very end you change it to H2O. They're the same thing. They both have two H's, one O. Um, the reason it's helpful to use HOH is because then you can see that H being a plus one and OH being a minus one, those are your ions. So in terms of displacing um, ions, positives with negatives, I mean, uh, it's helpful to know it's H and OH, not just H and O. That's it. Go try.